السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. First, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, people yesterday, I mean, uh, maybe he was a little bit tired, so at 9 a.m. we couldn't find except a few people here. <laughs> uh, but inshallah ta'ala, we will try to catch up now. Uh, so, uh, that, uh, our first uh, lecture today will be with our beloved uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Hosseini, and uh, the coordinator of this session will be Brother Muhammad Adni from uh, Tuyama and originally from Malaysia. I mean, living in Tuyama and from Malaysia. And uh, just for those who uh, need a Japanese translation, uh, uh, should stay on the last desk on the left on this room. Is, is anyone need Japanese translation? You should ask in Japanese. Uh, <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, Daimo Nihongo de. I'm not good in Japanese. Wait a bit. Nihongo de Kikitai to. So before I invite our um, speaker today, uh, I would like to introduce to all of you about uh, a little bit about uh, profiles of the speaker. Uh, first of all, uh, he's known as Sheikh Husseini. The actual name is uh, Muhammad Hussein bin Abdullah, uh, or better known as Husseini. Students uh, of Sheikh Al Bani, uh, and also Sheikh Ibn Al Baz, uh, when he was studying in the University of Medina, uh, and then uh, converted to Islam in his uh, teenage age. Uh, Inshallah, he will uh, explain to you further as uh, his. The lecture is uh, why a former Buddhist Christian accepted Islam. And he also the founder of uh, Al Khadi Foundation in Kuala Lumpur, panel speaker in uh, Peace TV, and also appeared in Islam Channel in London, and also Buddha TV in Egypt and Bahrain TV. Uh, he is also advisor for Cam Cambodian refugees in France. Uh, director of Islamic Center in Hong Kong and also advisor of uh, for Salam Foundation in Tokyo. So, let uh, to invite our speaker. So, with all honor, uh, I invite uh, Sheikh Sengi to give uh, the lecture. Tafaldan Mushkura.
الله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أوصيكم وإياي أولا بتقوى الله وأفاد المتقون كما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد العظم بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق رقاقه ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به وأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويخفر لكم من ذنوبكم وما يدع الله ورسوله فقد فاد فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حد محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أو كما قال السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise due to Allah Almighty, the creator of all things, the sender of all prophets and messengers, and the revealer of all truth. May the blessing and mercy of Allah be upon all of us who are here this morning, and to all the Muslim brothers and sisters wherever they are. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give guidance for those who seek His guidance, and may Allah forgive all the sins of the Muslim, male and female, young and old, those who are present with us and those who are absent among us. Firstly, we would like to thank the organizing committee led by Brother Muhammad Hassan uh, on behalf of our MSAJ and also the organizing committee and all the members of MSAJ and to my brother uh, from Malaysia who is an MC today and to all the Jama'a, the families, whether you are local or foreigners living in this country the Muslim and the Muslim Rahimahullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us with a very good reminder and that is the reminder that we always remind each other as fellow Muslim to be faithful to Allah. Ya yukhandazina amanu hittaqinna For you who believe in Allah, it's important for you to be faithful to Him, increase your iman to taqwa. And make sure that none of us will die until we fully have submit to Almighty Allah so that we will never regret in our future. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also remind us before I continue with the topic Ya ayuhal nas inna khlaqnaakum in zakhir wa udha wa ja'alnaakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akharamakum inna Allah ya qadu inna Allah alimun khabir Allah remind us as Muslim first, O people, in the ayah of the Qur'an, you will find that the early revelation when the Prophet was in Makkah, most of the ayah was revealed, Ayyuhan, Ayyuhan Nas, Ayyuhan, O people, O mankind, to remind us that Islam belongs to every one of us. It don't belong to a particular race and nation. It don't belong to the Malay or the Turks or the Pakistani, or the Arabs, but it belongs to mankind, Ayyuhannas, all people, all mankind. Indeed, we, Allah, have created all of you from one male and one female, from Adam and Eve. 
this is the beginning of yeah, our history. Allah created us from one male, Adam, and then He created Eve, Hawa, from Adam, and from Adam and Eve, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down races, nations, tribes, and that's why we are here today. Now Allah said, I did not, I did not create it or make you into nation and tribes to fight against each other, to condemn each other, to abuse each other. Lita'arafu. The reason Allah makes us different so that we can complement each other. We share with each other. We get to know each other and help each other. And Allah makes it very clear that the best among all of us is not because of your race, your name, your color. No. Allah said, The best among you is those who are more piety to Allah, more faithful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this ayah unites every one of us. And none of us have the right to say that Islam belongs to me. No. Islam belongs to Allah in a deen in Allah al-Islam. Islam is a deen belong to Almighty Allah. We are all who are accepted Islam, we call ourselves Muslim. We don't say we are Islam. Islam is the religion of Allah, but we are all Muslim. We call it in many minal Muslim. Now this is my muqaddima. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also remind us that we need to be honest to ourselves. We need to be honest to Allah. We need to be honest to the Prophet and also to our deen. Because Allah said, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu ittaqillah wa kulu qawlan salida. O you who believe in Allah, be faithful to Him and always be honest in whatever you do and whatever you say. You must be honest. You must be sincere. If not, then Allah will not accept whatever you do. By being honest, the reward is Allah said, Yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum turubakum. By being honest, then Allah said, Allah will forgive all our sin and He will come into our life to solve the problem that we encounter in our daily life. He promised us, Yuslih lakum a'malakum. I will solve your problem, help you to solve your problem, your issue, the problem that you face with everyone. But you must be honest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah end by saying, Umayyu ta'ala, Umayyu ta'ala wa rasulahu faqad thaz, Fawzan al-Din. Whoever have faith in Allah and in following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu then indeed, he will be the most successful people here and the year after. He will be rewarded kindly by Allah Almighty. Now come back to the topic, why apart from Buddhism? Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He decide what He want. And when He say, Kun, Fayakun. He decide that I was born from a Buddhist family. My father is from Canton, China. My mother is also a Chinese father born in Malaysia, in an island called Nang. Yeah. The Nang Island is a very popular island for all the tourists. Alhamdulillah, when I was young, I am inclined to spiritual things. I like to get involved in spiritual yeah, uh, experience, spiritual, anything spiritual I like to get involved. And we know that what our Prophet say is so true. Kullu maulid yulat ala fitra fa'aba wa bi hawidanihi ayuna siranihi ayuna jisani. Every child is born pure and clean. The same goes to me, to all of us, to all the Japanese people. But they become Buddhists. I became a Buddhist because my father, my mother, they are Buddhists. So we just follow our path. Normally that is the case. There is a sunnah Allah. So I became a Buddhist. So I learned about Buddhism. I learned the Dharma, the book. I understand what is the karma, the qada and qada Islamic. The Dharma is the book. The karma is the qada and qada according to the Islamic terminology. 
They believe there is a karma, that something is going to happen to you and it's going to happen. And when we look into Buddhism, the more you want to get closer to Buddhism, then you'll find that there is a link that Gautama Buddha did talk about God. But majority of the Buddhists today deny that. They say Buddhism is a way of life. It is a philosophical, philosophical way of life, nothing to do with God. This is what some Buddhist followers claim. But if you go back to the history, then you can link up one by one. And that's how I experienced in Buddhism. And suddenly I found that I have to move on. Now what is the link? Because the word Buddhism derived from the root word of Bud. Bud means the awakening, the awareness. The one upon a time, this man who was a prince in India, his father is a king. He lived in the palace. He lived in the palace with all the entertainment he wanted in this world, all the delight that he wanted. He would get it without any problem. And the father always reminded the people that anything, any suffering must not happen in front of his son. There is Guadalupe. He do not want his son to experience any kind of suffering. He wants the son to feel that this world is like Jannah. But one day he managed to travel out with the father. And with the will of Allah, he divert himself into the small lane. And suddenly he saw all the suffering that he had never seen before. People are dying of hunger, dying of sickness, people who are poor. And there are a lot of suffering behind the scene where in front of him everybody is just smiling, happy. Then he said it's time for him to leave the palace. Now the awareness is there. When you have the awareness, the boot, then he left the palace. He was looking for something. He saw some hermits, at that time they called the awliya to them, the awliya, whether the awliya of Allah or awliya shaitan. It's an awliya in the hunud, I mean, among the Hindus. When they don't care about themselves, they just isolate themselves, they go for halwa, with long hair, long nails, everything long, they don't cut anything, they don't throw anything that God gave them. But he found that this is not practical, it's not rational. But nobody can guide him, can give him an answer. So Guatama, with the awareness, the boot that he had, the last trial that he had to do is he made his own karwa. He made his own karwa by meditating under a bow tree. The bow tree is a tree known very popular in India. And that's where he isolate himself there. It's like how Moses isolates himself in the cave. Prophet Muhammad isolated himself in a cave too. They have to isolate themselves for a while to look for guidance. And same go to Guatama isolated himself under the wood tree and he was asking for guidance. And then one day he received the guidance. And that guidance qualified him to become Buddha. Buddha means enlightenment. The person who is being enlightened by God. And what we know Buddha according to Islamic term is Al-Huda. Al-Huda is Buddha in Sanskrit. Now go back to the history of Guatama. Guatama always remind his people after he was enlightened, remind his people and his students to do what? Only two things. The sukha and the dukkha. The sukha and the dukkha. In Malay, sukha means 
Good news. Gembira, happiness. Duka means bad news. Suffering. Now in Islam, you have Bashiran Wanazir. Good news for people who follow and a warning for people who reject the truth. Now when you understand this term properly, then you know that all these men, Wallahu alam, like what Allah said, وَلَقَدْ بَعَسْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا عَنْ نِعْبَدَ اللَّهُ وَاسْتَنِبَ الْخَابُودَ Indeed, to all nations, we have sent a messenger that will remind people to worship the only true God and one God, and He is Allah, and to abandon all other forms of shirk, all other type of worship. This is what Allah said, Wallahu alam, whether Guatama, Buddha is one of the prophet, Wallahu alam. But through my Christians, after becoming a Muslim, I found there is a lot of similarity. But what we were taught by the Buddhist monk today, there is a lot of don't that do in Buddhism. We know to be a good Buddhist, number one, you must be vegetarian. A true Buddhist, they don't kill any life. So what is happening today in Myanmar, the Rohingya, we do not know. Because we know Buddhists do not allow the killing of even a plant. How can they kill human? Even a womb. Yeah? The womb that is moving in, in, in the ground, you cannot even kill. How can killing a human? We do not know what is happening there. And who is doing that? We don't know. But to link up with Buddhists is against their teaching. They don't kill animals, they don't kill even uh, flies, they don't even kill mosquitoes. No. If the mosquito bite you, if you want to be fair to him, you bite him. If not, you let it go. You cannot kill him. Every living thing, you must honor. Even the plant, you know what is bean sprout? You know bean sprout? You know what is bean sprout? In Japan, they used to have a lot of bean sprout. Bean sprout is a kind of, uh, in, in the Malay they call Tau Ye. Yeah. This is not allowed for the Buddhist to eat. Why? Because you cannot pluck this tree from the root. You cannot kill any living thing. If you want to eat bean, bean sprout, you only can cut the top. You cannot pull the root. When you pull up, you're killing the plant and killing a lion. It is forbidden in Buddhism. That's why they go veggie. There's no fish for them. No meat, of course. But today everything goes. Yeah. Today is different. Can the Buddhists eat pork? No. They don't even eat beef, chicken, fish. No. How can they eat pork? No. No pork for them. But today everybody is eating. So when I start to feel that I need to go further, and there is a time, I left Buddhism. Because to be a good Buddhist, number one, you must tahlul always. You must keep your head, your hair, short or your bold. And you wear ihram always too. You must wear a kind of ihram yeah, in the yellow uh, robe. And then you must walk on this land Barefoot, you cannot wear shoes or slippers because he disciplined you to be humble and he wants you to back from door to door. That we live on this planet Earth as a slave, as a beggar. So the whole teaching of Buddhism is to discipline one's soul, to teach you how to live like a slave. There's dunya, you just forget about dunya. Being a young guy, I felt that there is too much something. I think there is something more than that. Not just what the priest or the monk is teaching her. So we left, we made a hijrah. From Buddhism, we moved to Christianity. In Christianity, we all know. 
there's a lot of similarity with Islam. But when I first entered Christianity, why I entered Christianity? Because the Muslim, none of my Muslim friends talk to me about Islam. I have many Muslim friends in Malaysia, but none of them talk to me about Islam. Just few days, a few weeks ago, we interviewed, we sent a team to a, a remote area in my country, in Malaysia. In Kuala Bila, there's a, like a kampong area, a village. There's a Chinese old man, 70 years old. We asked him, do you know anything about Islam? He said, no. Did any Muslim talk to you about Islam? No. What do you think about the Muslim? I think, okay, Muslim, non-Muslim, all the same. The same goes to me. I do not know anything about Islam, even I live among Muslims, because the Muslims don't care about the non yet Muslim. I hope it don't happen here. A lot of Muslims are here today. You are here in Japan, there must be a reason. We do know. Only Allah knows. But you cannot fail the people in Japan. You must talk to them about Islam. So when I became a Christian, why? Because a lot of my Christian friends, it was my sister, they always talk about Christianity. They want us to become a Christian. So to give a try, I just make another migration from Buddhism to Christianity. When I look into Christianity, I found there's a lot of easiness. You know? There's a lot of things that you can, then you can. In Buddhism, there are more don't than do. In Christianity, there are more do than do. Almost anything you can do in Christianity. As long as you believe in Jesus, He is your Savior, Allah. No problem. He will redeem your sin. You can commit how much sin you want to commit. You don't have a problem. You go to the Father, the Father will have the power to baptize you and free you from all your sin. So you become an angel next day. So you are free. So, being a young person, of course, we feel attracted. And Christianity always talk about love. Mahabba, love. You must love your neighbor, love your friend. Love, love the power of love. You know, love is blind, okay? <coughs> the power of love also has saved a lot of Japanese people. Again. Because they fall in love with a Muslim lady. Or they fall in love with a Muslim man. And they become Muslim, Muhammad. There's a power of love. Do you agree with me, brother? Love is very powerful. That's why they say love is blind. <laughs> they fall in love, you don't care about anything. So they have the, the emotion. They always talk about loving. Loving, you must be loving. You must love God. God loves you. You must save the world. So we thought that it is something very important that we must save more people from darkness to light, from falsehood to truth. If Jesus is the true God, it's time for us to tell the people, come and worship and accept Jesus as our Lord. And that's why I enrolled myself in the Christian Missionary Center in Penang to become a Christian missionary. Because I have to convey this good message, good news to the people. If this is true, this is good, I cannot keep it to myself. It's not good. I'm the selfish. I must convey the message of God. And so, but while I'm doing that, I came across a lot of voices in the Bible that start to give me some doubt. You know, brother and sister, there are two sects. Yeah, you have the Christians, the Roman Catholic, and you have the Protestant. The difference among them is something that you cannot imagine. To the extent, the difference between accepting Jesus as the Holy Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Ghost. They also have some difference. In Roman Catholic, they have 73 books. In their Bible, you have 73 surah. In the Protestant, they only accept 66. They reject 70. There's a lot of difference between a book that they believe, so-called the Old and the New Testament, 
173 and 166. They just go against each other. Now being a Christian, sometimes I, I start to think, if Jesus is the true God, then we must tell the world about Jesus and call the people to accept him as the true God. But then I encounter a lot of doubts about can we accept Jesus and God? The concept of Trinity, the Holy Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Ghost. I asked my father, the priest who was guiding us, I have problem in accepting Trinity. Can you enlighten me? How can Jesus become the Father? And we know that he was not man. You can look at your father when you have children. And how can he become the son of, yes, he can be a son, the son of Mary. Nobody denied that Jesus was the son of Mary. The son of Maria. Nobody denied that. But suddenly they say that Jesus is not just a son, but he himself is the father and he himself is God. And the Holy Spirit all come into one. The Father remind me, he said, oh my son, you see how they talk? The Christian priest normally give addresses for the book, my son, my children. By how the prophet used to convey to his companion as my companion or my umma. umma. I said, I have problem in accepting the concept of Trinity. And then he said, Oh my son, be patient. Let the Holy Spirit come to you and let the Holy Spirit enlighten you. And from that day, I was waiting for the Holy Spirit. But it didn't come to <laughs> Only all of those. Why? So the more I was waiting, the longer I was waiting, I started to have more doubts. Then I start to read something about Islam. I want to know about Islam now. Because if Islam is Christianity is true, I must convey my friend who are born Muslim Malay in my country to be a Christian. If this is true, then they are they are fault, they are what they believe is wrong. Because I don't understand what is Islam. I want to read the Quran, at that time nobody allowed me to read the Quran. We know some Muslims, they have the belief. If you are not yet a Muslim, you cannot touch the Quran. If you cannot touch the Quran, how can you read? So you have no right to roll to read the Quran. Neither anybody talked to me about Prophet Muhammad. So the only book that I had the opportunity to do, read at that time it is the book of Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab. How once upon a time he was the enemy of Islam and he heard the recitation of Surah Al-Tawha and then Allah gave him Hidayah and he became the second Khalif of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wa Sallam. That attracted me. That, that let me open my heart. I want to know more about Islam. And Alhamdulillah, I embraced Islam in 1968. So how old am I as a Muslim now? That's how I came to Islam. And 1972, Alhamdulillah, I went to Medina. And I completed my study in 78. And I migrated to Syria for two years. And from there, I went to France to be the advisor of the Muslim refugees from Cambodia. I came back to Malaysia and I was seconded to Hong Kong to be the director of the Islamic Center in Hong Kong. Then I was involved in a Southeast Asia Pacific uh, Dawa community. And there's a time I travel a lot in Southeast Asia Pacific, to Australia, New Zealand, Tonga, Western Samoa, Fiji, yeah, Indonesia, Singapore, to all these Asian countries. Then Alhamdulillah, 1992, we formed an organization called Al-Khadim. 
Kadim means serving mankind. We are here to serve. And inshallah, this year we are celebrating our 20 years anniversary. When? 29th of September. We are having a 20 year anniversary in Malaysia. Now, this organization, Alhamdulillah, we have managed to build a home called the Home of Hope. Where we are at present, we are helping more than 70 over orphans under our care. And we have a tahfiz, Maha Tahfiz. These are the few activities we are doing back home in Malaysia. And lately, Alhamdulillah, since the, about 10 years ago, we have been more heavily in having dialogues with people who have phobia to Islam in Europe. <coughs> when after 9-11, there's a lot of fitna to the Muslim and people keep on attacking Islam and Alhamdulillah, we have formed a group, the Islamic Defense Team, to talk about Islam to people who are not yet Muslim in Europe, in UK, in Norway, in Germany, and the German, in Germany and also in Belgium, Holland, Canada and the United States. Alhamdulillah, each time when we have some kind of dialogue, a lot of people became Muslims. We give khutbah in Belgium and in Germany, and even the not yet Muslim can enter the mosque, the masjid, to listen to the khutbah. And when they are attracted to the truth, they'll come forward and become a Muslim. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, if anybody who have the intention to look for the truth, I believe at the end of the day, they will accept Islam. Because when you look into the teaching of Islam, Islam is not a new religion. It is the religion of all prophets and messengers, from Adam to Noah to Abraham to Moses to Jesus. All of them are Muslims. Muslim means a person who submit to the true God. The only one God. <coughs> they can be Japanese Muslim. In the that's why you see the only religion that gives everybody the same right is Islam. Everybody is equal in the sight of Allah. Whether you are Arab or not Arab, because our Prophet reminds us about the spirit of Islam. When he was addressing his Ummah in Arafah, he said to them, you know, Arafah is a place where only Muslim will be there. People who are not yet Muslim cannot be in Arafah. 100% Muslim. So when the Prophet was giving his khutbah in Arafah, he said, Ayyuhannas. He said, Ayyuhannas. The Prophet can say, Ayyuhal Hujjaj, Ayyuhal Mu'minun, Ayyuhal Muslimun, but he used the term Ayyuhannas. Why? is to remind every single Muslim that Islam belongs to everyone. Islam don't belong to the Muslim, don't belong to the Arab or particular race. It belongs to every single race. Ayyuhan nas, inna rabbakum wahid. O people, indeed your God is only one. The true God owes only one. The one who created the Japanese, the Chinese, the Arab, the European, all is one. One God. We must believe in this. Why, brother, I say that we must believe? Sometimes Muslims also are confused. Maybe there are some Muslims who thought that there is a Chinese God who created the Chinese. And maybe in India we also have the feeling. There is an Indian God who created the Hindus. Now why I say that? If you go to the, any Chinese temple, have you been to the Chinese temple before, brother? Have any one of you entered any Chinese temple before? Not yet. Yeah. Try to enter. If you enter the Chinese temple, you experience that. All the deities, the God that they believe, look like Chinese. Look like me, we have a beard. They 
Brooklyn. Now, if you enter any, any Hindu temple, have you entered a Hindu temple before? Yes. How do their God look like? They look at Hindus. They are dark. They, are, they don't have fair color. God. All are dark. Because everybody imagine God look like them. If you go to the West, you have the church. The church where you have a white father, Jesus, is painted in white. The churches that is yeah, run by the black, the Afro, yeah, African or American, they are the the, the 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 color of Jesus is black. If you go to Philippines, then Jesus look like Filipinos. So everybody is imagine God look like that. But you see, Islam is beautiful. The Prophet said, Ayyuhannas inna rabbakum wahid. O people, whether you believe in Allah or not, peace is between you and Allah. But the only true God, the creator, al khaliq is Allah. There's no two God. This is what we must believe first. Wa inna abadum wahid. And all of us came from one father. Unless we have one group of people saying no, some of us came from apes, from monkey. There is a theory of Darwin. There is only a theory, that's what you call theory. It's, there's no fact, but it's the theory. But we believe what our prophet said. All of us came from Adam. Adam is our father. So we are no stranger, whether you are Japanese, you are Indian, you are Pakistani, you are Arab, or Malaysian, we are all like. One family, we are children of Adam. Are we not children of Adam, brothers? Are we children of Adam? Are we descendants of Prophet Adam? Yeah, a lot of my brothers out there, they say, no, I'm Ahl al-Bayt, I'm the descendant of Prophet Muhammad. I say, Ahl al I'm also descendant of Prophet. Is it bad? How can you be the descendant of Prophet? The descendant of Prophet Adam, Ali <laughs> So everybody are equal. Everybody is equal. And what did the Prophet say? Remember, the Arab is not superior than the non Arab except Tapu. Neither the white is superior upon the black except Tapu. Whether you are new Muslim or you are born Muslim, there's no difference in the sight of Allah. The one that deepened us in the sight of Allah is not our name, our color, our race, but it's, not. it's our taqwa. And the Prophet said, At-taqwa hina. He may ashara, ashara in the heart. At-taqwa is here not in my dress, not in my kofiyah, or my, my, my thaw, but At-taqwa is in the heart. So brothers and sisters, if you understand Islam, inshallah, I think we can be a better person. And we can set a good example wherever you go. Even in Japan, you can be a good example for the Japanese people. But we fail to be the good and the best. <coughs> Even Allah has said, Kuntum khaira ummah, you are not just an ummah. Allah said to us that you are the best ummah. Best in what? In everything. In discipline. In cleanliness, yeah, in everything, but today we cannot be the best. When you talk about discipline and cleanliness, maybe the Japanese people are better than all of us. Do you agree with me, brother? Do you agree that cleanliness here is better than the cleanliness back home? Yes. We have no choice except to accept the truth. The truth is the truth. You cannot deny it. Because they act upon what they believe is good for them. But if they believe that what they are doing is related to the faith, the true faith of Islam, mashallah, it's very easy for them to accept Islam by right. Because they have accepted three quarters of the Islamic values. <coughs> Islam is not here to talk about just about Tawheed, but also Islam emphasizes the importance of discipline, adab. But we fail to 
follow the adab. We accept the aqidah, we ignore the adab. If you look at the Islamic book, brothers and sisters, whether in a book of hadith, Bukhari, hadith, Muslim, the first topic they talk about iman. They talk about iman. And then later on they talk about tahara, about cleanliness. Then we need to go into fiqh, about salah. We are the only nation yeah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasized after qidah is tahara. But today we fail to, make, to keep ourselves clean physically, mentally and spiritually. That's why Allah said, Abdaha man zakkaha wa qad qaba man dasaha. Indeed, the successful one are the person who keep himself clean physically, mentally and spiritually. And those who fail themselves are those who corrupt their mind, their life and also their soul. And that's why we are, we must remember why you are here, brothers and sisters. We are here in Japan, there's a reason Allah wants you to be here. Why there are so many Chinese Muslims in China? In the Ming Dynasty, you have 120 million of Muslims in China. 120 million. Almost about four times the population of Malaysia. But now you only have about 50 over million of Muslims in China. The majority of them have migrated to other countries. <coughs> How many Japanese Muslims here, brothers? Maybe Brother Ahmad, yeah, Ahmad can, can confirm later on. Yeah. Maybe you have 3,000 family Japanese, less than that, less than that. But how many not the Muslim were staying in Japan now? How many Muslim? Not Japanese Muslim, the Muslim that from overseas. Around how many? 100,000? 100,000. Can you imagine, brother and sister, if one person bring one Japanese to Islam? In 10 years, how many? How many? One, one by one. Or one to one, just one to one. Or we fail to do that. We fail to do that. You know why we fail to do that? I tell you why. Because we don't care. We don't feel for that. The feeling of love, the feeling of caring, loving, sharing is not there. We don't care about them. Now, how Islam started in the time of the Prophet? Because the Prophet was sent among the mushrikeen, people who commit shirk. And he started from his close family, Khadija, the one. His cousin, Ali. His best friend, Abu Bakr, he started from people who is close to him. Do you have a close friend with you here? Any one of us have some close Japanese friend? You sure you have? Your roommate, your classmate, your workmate, everybody is your friend. If you are business, your business partner. So what should you do, brother and sister? Just do it. You must talk to them. You have a restaurant here. You have Japanese who are not yet Muslim come to your restaurant to buy food. Do you have that? Show them your kindness. Show them that you care. Give them a free meal on and on. Why not? Bring them closer to Islam. Show them good example. When you promise something with them, fulfill your promise. Because you know that it's part of Amana. And Amana is part of Iman. We have failed because we thought that Islam is just for us. Alhamdulillah, after we became a Muslim until today, I think we have 5,000 minimum converted to Islam through us. Locally and internationally when we travel also, we met up with a lot of people who are not yet Muslim when we have discussion and one after the end of the discussion we ask them, can you accept the truth? They say, okay. Can you accept Islam? They say, okay, we reach hard. It's not difficult. 
وما علينا إلا البلاء والله يحدي من يشاء. Our duty is to convey. The one who gives the hidayah is not we but Allah. But the best da'wah, brothers and sisters, you don't have to compare with what they believe. No. Show them a bad example. A da'wah bil hal. Good example. Amana, sincerity, honesty in business, clean, you are very disciplined, very clean. Everything that Allah wants to do, you do. Inshallah. The rest you leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe, brothers and sisters, we can do more. I always say to my Japanese friend, do you know that three quarters of your value is Islamical? Three quarters of your value is Islamic. Yeah, Amana. A few years ago when I came to Tokyo, I went into the masjid. I found I pass it to the committee of the masjid. They say, where do you found it? I said, here, in this year, put it back there. I said, put it back there. Then I don't know if other people will take it. It's okay, just put it there. They say, why? In Japan, people don't steal. Anything you put there, the owner will come back and they'll find their own goods. So a Japanese Muslim family came to me. He said, I just visit Malaysia. I went to pray Jumaat, Friday, Friday Salah. Jumaat prayer. I came up, I lost my shoes. <coughs> what can I say? What can I say? You see, how we train ourselves to go to Jumaat, we wear different suits. Sometimes we wear different slippers, different color. Or we put one here, one there. Inshallah, you have peace. You come up, you can find both of them. <coughs> this shows that the Muslim have no amana. Where amana is part of the iman, the Prophet said, "La iman di manga amana There is no iman. You have no amana. And the greatest amana is our Deen, Islam. No Quran is an amana. It's time for you to share with your friend. Give them a book. Give them the Quran, the Musa in Japanese language. Pass it to them, let them read. Islam is a very beautiful religion, brother and sister. If I was a Buddhist and I was a Christian, I can accept Islam. I believe other people can do so. But I came to Islam, it's not because of the people. It so happened that I love spiritual things, I get involved in my research and I got a hidayah. But if somebody will talk to me about Islam, maybe it's easier and faster. Now, if you do something now, I believe, brother and sister, Allah may help us. Allah may help us. In Tansar Allah, Yansur, you cannot imagine. Maybe in your lifetime, still, you are spending 10 years in Japan, suddenly you have three Japanese persons. I came to Japan almost five years <coughs> continuously now. Alhamdulillah. Each time, if I land in Tokyo, we have somebody converted to Islam. Young Japanese. Each time, if I came to Tokyo, two, three, and then Islam. Now, if I pay a visit every year once, I can even call it two or three. I believe you can do more if you are staying here. It's a matter of how to talk to them while eating. Because da'wah bilhal, the best way is da'wah, very informal. Don't make informal. Formal, they are shy. Very informal while eating, while drinking together. Then we talk. We talk about values first. We talk about value, the beauty of Islam. You don't talk about the fiqh, halal haram, you talk about the beauty of Islam. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the heart. After you make an effort, brothers and sisters. Our sisters also can do their da'wah to the Japanese sisters. The brother, do the da'wah to the brothers. You can do it in that manner, inshallah. Show them the mu'amala. You know that the, the, the mu'amala is very important. <coughs> and inshallah, may Allah help us, brothers and sisters. <coughs> now I'm going to end my lecture for this session for this morning. 
and I'm going to give you about 10 minutes more Q&A. If there's any uh, Q&A, we open for Q&A session, inshallah. What about Actually, I have two questions. So, the first one, as a former Buddhist, you said that nobody of Muslims talk with you about Islam. So, apart from that obstacle, what's the obstacles for a Buddhist to accept Islam? I don't think there's any other obstacle. Majority of the Buddhists who do not accept Islam because they don't know anything about Islam. Nobody talk to them about Islam. I, I believe in Japan also the same thing. A lot of Japanese don't know the Islam. The only thing they know today is about what CNN say about Islam and what BBC say about Islam. And all these are fitna. So the, I don't think there's any obstacle. To my Buddhist friend, when I talk to them, nobody reject, nobody go against them. They just listen because they have nothing to argue. Because when we present Islam, we can present in a better way, in a comprehensive way, that they cannot deny. Yeah. The Burhan, the Hujjah is very strong in us. And when we talk about Islam, brother, we don't use our idea. When we talk, when we represent Islam, He asked Hassan is from Allah. Follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. Just show them the Dalil. Not my thinking, my opinion, not what, what majority say, not the Pakistani Muslims say, or the Malay or the Arab Muslims say, no. This is what called Allah or Khala Rasulullah. That's No obstacle. So far, I don't have any problem with the Buddhists. The second question, you said that we have to discuss with our Japanese friends about Islam and introduce Islam to them. But actually, every time I try to discuss with my friend, they directly say, you cannot drink, you cannot eat meat, you cannot... They always feel this is an obstacle, this is very difficult. They always send me, Islam keep you sheep. So, how to overcome this and let them concentrate about the beauty of Islam, rather yeah. than... The hokum, yes. That's why I'm just saying just now. When you start to talk, I start to talk about the hokum. Don't go into the film. Talk about the aqidah, the beauty of one God. No, who created us? Talk about our argument. My experience with the Japanese people in Tokyo, when I talk to them in Akhya, some of them cry. No, they believe that there is a life after death. Everyone believes. Even the Buddhists believe. The Hindus believe. The Chinese believe. The Japanese also they believe. That there is life after death. But they don't know how is it Situation in life of the we have all the Quran. MashaAllah. About Al Akhirah, about Jannah, about Nar, about who is going to enter Jannah, what is the situation that they like in Jannah. Everything is very detailed in Islam. They don't have in their book. They only have the karma. The karma in Buddhism says you do thing good, you have a good reward. Finish. And when you are good, you die good, your soul will go back. To heaven. Finish. And about what is the situation, what is the lifestyle you're going to have? They have nothing. But if your soul is bad, according to Buddhism, if you are a bad guy, bad soul, you die, to that they say, God gives you another chance, re reincarnation. You'll be reborn again in a new body. If you die, you still are bad. <laughs> you never talk about. You still can, you become worse. Then they get reincarnated again until the time will come, they will turn you into an animal. No more reincarnate in a human form. Either you become a snake, or you become a monkey, or you become a chinzil, or you become a worm, or you become a mosquito. That's why they say you cannot kill all this animal. Maybe it is your father. Maybe it is your auntie, your sister. But Islam is beautiful. But don't talk on faith yet. Talk about the beauty of Islam. The brotherhood in Islam. That you and me, we are like a family. You know we are no stranger. You believe in God, you know what you gain. If you go to paradise, you know what is paradise. You have everything in paradise. 
You want cat? You have cat in paradise. You want tiger? Tiger in paradise. No, somebody they love cat. Somebody they love bears. They love so many things. You can have all the things in paradise. Just believe in the true God. Is that right? The sisters, any question about the sister? Okay, I have one question about uh, some Japanese monarch. He doesn't believe in any religion, any kind, in any kind of such kind of spirituality. He just believes in nature. When I get to talk about this thing, he, at the end he believes. Not, not believe, but he denied everything and stopped on And just tell the thing that he just imagined. These things are just yeah. So how do you change this mind? In my family, my brother is a Mohit. My brother is a free thinker. Is it religion is man-made? It's God business is man-made. Put some fear in you, put some fear in me. If we believe in ourselves, it's more important than believe in God. I don't think God exists. I say, why you deny God? And shake his hand. You are halfway this now. Because before you want to accept Allah, you must deny all other gods. And that ilaha, there's no God. In Allah. So he's halfway to Islam. You must welcome, oh, you're halfway to Islam. What do you mean halfway? Yeah. Because we also like you, la ilaha. We don't believe in any other ilaha except Allah. So it's not difficult actually. Human brother, to be very frank to you, nobody think in the heart deny God. Nobody can be <coughs> deny God. It's just word, nafs. They say I don't believe. By right, actually, they don't. They cannot say they don't believe God. They just do not want to attach to an organized religion. They want to free. Them. That's why we call them free thinker. They want to free themselves. Sometimes they are very confused about the word religion. A lot of people are very confused. The word religion is so confused. <coughs> I met a few of them who are free thinker, communists, yeah? those who don't believe in any god, they are atheists. But after some time, they say, yeah, I, think, I think I can accept one god is also okay. One God is easy. But which God is <laughs> They say have problem. But one is easier than have two or three gods, so many gods. So one God, okay. So I always talk to them. And alhamdulillah, they have no problem. I say, you know why? Because Allah said, Allah who created all of us, we must believe what Allah said. This is what they claim, but not what is in their heart. Allah said, Wala in sa'altahum man khalqa samawati wa al if you ask anyone who created the heaven and the earth, they will say God. There's one God. Either they call Allah or this is God. And we know who is the one who mislead people, who misguide us, who are the one? Who is the one who mislead us? Shaitan. Do Shaitan believe in Allah? Yes. Remember. The Lucifer, the Shaitan, Lana Allah, he believed in Allah. Even that Jal believed in Allah subhanahu. So how can this not that Jal say he don't believe in God? They all believe, but sometimes they just say they don't. Huh? I don't believe. Why? They want to free themselves from religion. That's all. So don't worry about what they say, God. Yeah? Surely they believe. You can say, I know you believe in God. I know you believe. The first one, the, actually there's two questions. The first one is some students who come here in Japan uh, in scholarship for doctor degree or master or undergraduate concentrate only in their study and uh, not try to talk about Islam or make Dawah. 
and said we came on, we came only for study. Is it true? And what do you advise uh, them to do? And another one, how we can begin the work for Japanese person who asks about Islam, what are the steps? Uh, how can we begin the work for Japanese person who asks about Islam and what are the steps? <coughs> Now, firstly, for a person who Muslim who travel all the way to Japan just for dunya, then you have, I would say that you have lost a lot. You don't gain a lot. There are two types of people in this world. Famina nas wa yaqulu rabbana adina fi dunya hasana wa mana hufil akhira. There are people who just want dunya and they'll get dunya. Inna ma ta'amalu binya up to your intention. But there are people who say, Rabbana adina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa fil akhirati. We want both. So we are Muslim. They are not yet Muslim. So they have their dunya, we have dunya and akhirat. So I, I, I would like that every student who are here with the first intention to seek knowledge here, please, renew your intention. You re renew it then. Not only I'm here for dunya, I also want to have Akhirah here. How to do Akhirah? While you are studying, you may have your study mates. You may have a non Muslim, a Japanese brother or sister, who is also studying your classmate. Do you have that? Do you have a Japanese classmate? So while you are studying, if you know something extra, please help them. Be committed in your study. Inshallah, inshallah. By showing that you care for them, if you know something extra, you share with them, teach them, they know that these Muslims are good people. They are very helpful people. They are kind people. They are very caring. If they have some extra food, share with them. Joshua Maybe you win them over by that character. In how? Not just in this time. So this is what you should do, sisters and all the brothers here. <clears throat> Number two, how to start to talk to them about Islam. There are two things you can do. If you can ask them, do you, what religion do you belong to? Ask them. If they say they are Buddhist or they are Christian, that means there is a religion. That means these people are not free thinkers. They believe there is a religion. Okay. Ask them, just ask them, what do you think about Islam? Just ask them because that one, like what our prophet said, Khatib al Nas ala Qatri ukulihim. When you talk to them, you must know their way of thinking. How they think about Islam, you must know. So you ask them, get some tip from them. You, because you want them to talk to you. They say, What do you think about Islam? Let them say. But don't be emotional. When they comment about Islam, don't be emotional because they comment about Islam based on what they know through the video. So we just have patience with Hekma, listen and get the answer from some scholars, maybe some local brother who, Japanese brother who understand the culture here better and talk to them. If they are free thinker, again, the atheists, they don't believe. Ask them, what do you think about people who believe in God? Two questions. One is, people who have a religion, ask them, I'm Islam. People who don't have any religion, ask them, what do you think about people who believe in God? Just want to know their level of thinking. And from there, we will work out, inshallah. The steps start from there. Once you know their mentality, what they incline to. Right? When I talk to some people, they talk about food. They want to keep their health healthy. Then I talk about palm food. You don't go and talk about salat, about siyam, you talk about ta'am. Everybody wants to eat. And that's why Islam says, be selective in your food. Eat good food, halal food. Just an example. Yeah. So this is the best way for us to do da'wah. By knowing the people who you want to call them to Islam. Their mentality, the way they think to Islam. And from there, I believe you can talk to them better and they'll be more open to you 
and inshallah, sooner or later, at the end of the day, through your good example, may Allah give them hidayah. For a dua, in the daytime you do da'wah, at night, at night, don't forget to make dua. Because at the end of the day, the one who gives hidayah is not you, not me, but it's Allah. So don't forget to make dua. Allah give them guidance, like the Prophet said, Allahumma di qawm fa innahum la ya'lamun. Allah, they come, oh Allah, give guidance to my people, they reject the message because they do not know. May Allah give them guidance, may Allah help us, brother and sister, and may Allah strengthen our iman and make us the good Muslim, a practicing Muslim, and may Allah make us show the beauty of Islam by our unity among the different races that are here, but we live together, we share together with Islam, inshallah. May Allah guide us, subhanahu wa bihamdi. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته يا سيد المخير أتو سي بس أتوقع أنه يحب الله الحمد لله سو أريد أن أعطي هذا المكان لكي أشاهد أن أعطي so inshallah ta'ala we have now a 10 minutes break and uh, there's a uh, as yesterday there's a cafe and tea outside so please uh, uh, return by uh, I mean, after 10 minutes inshallah after 10 minutes. So.